I am standing right on the parade route, 25 miles north of Chicago. How are you doing and, and how are your kids doing? That's CNN anchor John Berman, MSNBC's Chris Jansen, doing their shows today from Highland Park, Illinois. That's the wealthy suburb where a 21-year-old misfit opened fire on the July 4th parade, killing seven, injuring dozens more. Of course, they didn't anchor from Chicago's South Side, where gang shootouts and street crime killed eight over the weekend and injured 71. Field anchoring, going out as an anchor and doing your show from a location is expensive. And it's involved for the networks. It's a significant decision by the executives and the anchor together. And it's done for a lot of reasons, one of which is to tell the audience this is the most important story, perhaps even of the month. I'm here. I, the anchor, care enough to get out of the studio to bring you the story from the location. There's a pretty simple reason for going to Highland Park. CNN and MSNBC's audience cares about mass shootings. They care a lot. Of course, white, upper, middle class, and upper class professionals are those network's primary viewers. Those are the people who live in Highland Park. And gun violence happened to them rather than in a poor neighborhood. But also, mass shootings politically fit CNN and MSNBC's narrative. Pay attention, because wherever you come down on gun control debate, Democrats will try to hang these shootings around Republicans' necks like an anchor. Pastor Corey Brooks is with us in a minute about what could actually be done to stop the killings in the poor neighborhoods. But first, Dan O'Donnell, voice of Milwaukee, is here with the politics. All right, we're just watching the political landscape here. Uh, as crime has risen, it has certainly been a good thing for Republicans and for law and order going into November. If all of a sudden Democrats are able to say Republicans and lax gun laws are responsible for mass shootings, doesn't that totally flip the script for suburban soccer moms who are now really worried about the next mass shooting at the next parade? It certainly has that potential, Leland, but the reality is, as you said in your intro, the major issue with violence in America, and this is not to belittle in any way what happened in Highland Park, it was an unspeakable tragedy. But the streets of Chicago claimed more people over the weekend. In the city of Milwaukee, the city that I'm from, five children, children, were shot over Fourth of July weekend. I'm not going to sit here and say that America doesn't have a problem with murder. It very clearly does. But the types of murders that America sees, the reason that we're setting records in Chicago and Milwaukee and all over the place, it isn't because of mass shootings. Those get the headlines from Highland Park to Uvalde right, but, right. to Buffalo. You just said it yourself, though, Dan, that the, the headlines are what drives the narrative, what drives what people are, are talking about in, in that sense. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris headed to Highland Park tonight. Uh, never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity, right? Right. Right. So, no, in that sense, you're right. So it does sort of undermine the Republican law and order narrative. But the reality is, Leland, that we already in Illinois have some of the strictest gun laws in the entire country. The Gifford Center gave Illinois an A minus. Every town USA says Illinois is one of the best states in the country when it comes to gun control. Unless we're talking about nationwide assault weapons bans. I know there was a call for that this evening. We're not talking about a sort of crime that can be instantly prevented. Ergo, I think the Republican message of cracking down on the lawbreakers, of bringing those responsible for crimes, no matter how heinous to justice, is the one that's ultimately going to win out. Now, is this going to have impact? Will there be some people who live in suburbs like Highland Park and say, well, you know what, I was going to vote for Republicans, but because they seem to be soft on the issue of mass shootings, maybe I'll flip. Yes, there are going to be a few. I still maintain, though, that by far the biggest issue people are going to be voting for is on inflation, on gas prices, on growth grocery prices. And unfortunately for Democrats, people blame them overwhelmingly for those. Well, there's no question about that. Uh, it may not be President Biden's fault. You can quibble there, but he is the guy who ac occupies the White House. His responsibility, all the more reason that the White House uh, enjoys talking about issues other than inflation, like an assault weapons ban. Take a listen from today. We need to make sure that we ban assault weapons, right? That is one of the, th the things that's being reported uh, that this uh, suspect um, had. How do Republicans counter that when talking to the 20 percent, the, the unicorn swing voter 
who really cares about one issue or another depending on what year it is. People don't feel safe. It doesn't even matter whether they feel like they have enough money or not. Well, this is true, but I would counter that by saying, well, we did have an assault weapons ban in this country. And Columbine happened when there was an assault weapons we ban argue, in this We can country. argue the statistics, but we even heard from the, the, the uh, prosecutor tonight in the press conference, uh, clearly on message, uh, national TV, every network took it, including this one. He said, as the prosecutor, we needed an assault weapons ban, and during the time we had one, crime went down. How, how do Republicans deal with that? Well, during the time that we had crime going down, we also had an incredibly tough attitude towards crime. California, for goodness sakes, sakes had the three, three strikes in your out policy. Illinois was cracking down on crime. We had the crime bill signed by President Bill Clinton in 1995, authored by then Senator, at least co-authored by then Senator Joe Biden. Every Democrat is now disavowing. So if you want to talk about cause and effect, we actually did have during the assault weapons ban because of Columbine and because of the copycat Columbine effect, we had mass shootings go up. All right. That's that's just a fact. We had crime go down because we had law enforcement and we had legislators working together to get criminals off the streets. A recognition that it wasn't the gun. It was the criminal. Uh, now yeah. we're in the exact same situation because we've got from Milwaukee to Chicago, New York. We've got prosecutors. Yeah, who no, don't Dan, no, Dan, you, you've been ringing guys. the alarm bell on prosecutors for a long time, which is where we're, we're headed now, especially in, in Chicago. Dan, thank you. It's good to see you. Absolutely, sir. Yeah. All right. For those living on Chicago's west side, the violence in Highland Park isn't shocking. Violence on the streets and mass shootings is normal. It's every day of life. Since the start of the year, 282 have been murdered. That's more than one a day in more than 1,500 total shootings. Pastor Corey Brooks has been camping on a rooftop for more than 200 days in Chicago to protest the lack of attention to the danger his community faces every day. Uh, Pastor, the news broke just a couple of minutes ago. Does it surprise you that uh, the vice president isn't headed down to Chicago's west or south side, but it's headed out to Highland Park? No, it doesn't surprise me at all. It plays right into their narrative, their agenda. Uh, it's obvious that they don't care about inner city life. Um, you know, it's a shame that 95% of African Americans are voting Democrat, and they shouldn't. And this is one of the reasons why. You know, they're voting Democrat, but it's obvious that they don't care about our community. They don't care about what happens to our community. As many killings and shootings as we've been having, in Chicago for continuous years and ongoing. We just had a mass shooting right here in our neighborhood. Um, and we've heard no word from uh, President Biden or uh, the vice president, nor do we hear it from any of their leadership. You know, and what that is the type of thing that upsets me. I, I thought it was interesting, you might be able to help us understand this. Mayor Lightfoot today met Vice President Harris at the tarmac when she landed and was there uh, talking to her. Uh, never mind for a second that she did not come out and meet the president when he came to town. She scheduled an Im immediate, uh, <laughs> an emergency last minute trip to Texas to get out of town. What, what do you think they talked about on the tarmac? And if you had had the ability to have that meeting uh, rather than the mayor, what would you have said? Well, one of the things I know that they probably did not talk about is the violence and the crime that's going on in Chicago. Uh, if I had the opportunity, I would definitely say, listen, the same way you're going to Highland Park, which you should, I don't want to act as if that should not happen. That's a tragedy, what happened in Island Park. You should also visit the south sides and west sides of Chicago, where we've been dealing with violence ongoing for years. And um, that is the type of behavior that we need to see from leadership. Don't just take it when it fits your agenda and your narrative, but also when it's uh, best for the American uh, people, that's what we should also do. So that's exactly what I would say. So much of this ends up being about race in this discussion, uh, and so much of the conversation in America is about race. Homicides in Chicago, 1965 to 2021. Uh, young black men are dying at a rate never seen before, and yet we're told by the Biden administration and by Kamala Harris, they care nothing more uh, about nothing more than young black men and giving them opportunities. Where is the disconnect? Well, the disconnect is, uh, hot air, lots of words, no action. Um, it's obvious to me that they don't care about young black males killing young black males, nor do they care about young black males having opportunities. If they did, um, they would support uh, concepts like we're trying to do. Uh, we've shown that uh, we have a model that works. 
Um, that's the reason why I'm on this route because we're not getting any help from the, the government. Uh, and so you get I have any to help take from the measures. city. None. So huh. we we're not getting any help. And that's the reason why I'm, I'm on this route uh, to raise the funds, to build this community center. And I'm going to build it and uh, we're going to do it with the help of the American people without government assistance. And, and but I will say this, that if they really were concerned about these young black men who are being killed every single day, um, they would support programs um, that would help them that that work, not just throwing money at a problem, but programs that actually are pulling these men, and these young men out of the street. I'm sure you'd agree. I only got about 30 seconds, but they'd also start locking people up who commit these crimes. Without a doubt. If you commit the crime, mm -hmm. you should definitely go to jail for it. Uh, these are hideous acts uh, that we have to do something about that's not being done in Chicago. So yeah. I agree totally. Mm -hmm. Hey, Pastor, it's always good to see you. Thank you. Yes. Sorry you had to be you. on I on, on this kind of occurrence and for this reason. Good to see you, sir. God yeah. bless. Thank Speaking you. of God, it. there is. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.